As Crocoblock's jet engine matures, it's quickly becoming a bit of a powerhouse for making more unique dynamic websites with WordPress and Elementor. The latest release, version 2.4, brought with it a slew of great new features. In today's first look, I'll take you through some of the basics of the much anticipated dynamic visibility options. This allows you to control a lot of different triggers to show or hide almost any part of your website. From a simple login or my account section to multi-criteria visibility rules, you really have a lot of options to manage pages, templates, and a lot more. So let's just jump into WordPress and take a look at dynamic visibility in Jet Engine and some basic examples of how to use it. Now, before you can start using the dynamic visibility option with Jet Engine 2.4 and above, you have to actually go in and enable it. As with everything to do with Jet Engine, with the options, it's very easy to do. We're going to come over into the dashboard, come to the Jet Engine menu, and come to Jet Engine. And from there, we now have the different options or modules we can enable and disable. You can see we've got a new entry called Dynamic Visibility for Widgets and Sections. Make sure that's checked, hit Save, and you are good to go. So let's start this off with what most of us would consider to be a fairly typical example. If a user's logged in, do one thing. If a user's logged out, do something else. We're going to be using this heading section where we've got login and my account. These are simply just text entries with a link, nothing more than that. Now, to activate things when you're working with Jet Engine 2.4 and beyond, this isn't switched on by default. You have to enable the option to work with dynamic conditions. So let's just come up to the login option. We'll select that widget. Now, if you find this is a bit awkward, you can always use the navigator to make sure you've got exactly what you want selected. Then we take, come over and on the advanced section on the left hand side, you can see we've got a new entry called dynamic visibility. By default, this is disabled. If we just select that and switch it on, you can see this now gives us control over what we want to do. So you can see we've got show element if condition is met or hide element if condition is met. Now, if you've ever used dynamic conditions for Elementor, that's going to feel very, very familiar because it is basically it's either going to show something or hide something based upon the conditions that you apply to it. That's all we're doing here. However, we do have a lot more conditions available to us. And the nice thing with Jet Engine, as with a lot of the different features we've got with Jet Engine, is we can apply multiple different conditions and stack them on top of each other. We can also set up the relation, i.e., is it an and relation or an or relation? So in other words, and means that all of the conditions have to be met or means one or more of the conditions have to be met. So with that being said, we can then start creating our conditions. So if we open this up, you can see we've got the condition drop down. Inside there, we've now got access to a boatload of different types of conditions. General is probably going to be probably where you spend most of your time because these are the sort of very generic conditions. The same goes with the thing like the user, for example. So we could base things upon whether a user is logged in, if they have a certain role, if a role is logged in or not logged in, all those kinds of useful things. So let's use this login as a simple example. All we're going to do is say we're going to show this if the user is not logged in. So in other words, they'll just have the login option. So all we need to do, user not logged in. Simple as that. We're going to come up then to the next option, which is the My Account, and we're going to do the same thing again. We'll enable the dynamic visibility, show element if condition is met, we'll set our first condition, and we'll just set that to be if the user is logged in. So now we've just set up a very simple switch. If they're not logged in, they'll see the login link. If they are logged in, they'll see the My Account link. If we update that page, and then we'll take a look at this through using the preview options, you'll see because I'm logged in, I'll see the My Account option. However, if we open up an incognito window and take a look, you'll see that I'll see the login message. And you can see now I'm presented with a login message. So it is really a simple switch there, nothing too complex kind of thing you're going to do over and over again. But like I say, you can still stack extra conditions on top of this. So you could say a user is logged in and then you could add another item and set another condition. And you could say that this is a specific role. So you can say the user role is, and we can choose a user role. So we could say that if you are logged in and you are a user role of X, then you'll see my account. So in other words, administrators may not need to see my account. You may only have something like an editor. So we could say, if you're an editor and you're logged in, then you'll see the my account option. Otherwise, you won't see it. So you can see how stacking these on top of each other can get quite complex conditions all built out with any real difficulty, just making sure that your logic holds true. 
And like I say, then you have the relation to choose exactly how this works. So you may say that user is logged in or the user role is to show something. Whereas and means that both of these would have to be met to actually show this particular element on the page. Let's take a look at another typical example of where you use conditions. Let's take this industry way, for example. If we open that up and take a look, you can see there are no associated property images in the gallery. So we don't really want to show this property images section at all. Now this is made up of two individual sections, the title and also the area where the gallery would display. So this is a example with no images in those galleries. Let's come back out and take a look at a building that does. And you can see they, it makes sense because we've got the gallery of images in there. So we can deal with that really easily. Let's, let's hop over into the dashboard. I've opened up the template for my individual properties. And as you can see, this is the placeholder now in the top right hand side. We're going to deal with the title first of all. So we'll just select the title. We'll come over, make sure we're in advanced and we'll open up the dynamic visibility option. Once you enable that, you can then set your conditions like we've just seen in the first stage. This is a little bit more of a complex kind of condition though. We can't just use very simple examples. Now you may be thinking, could I just use is empty? Well, that doesn't actually exist inside the jet engine dynamic visibility option. We've got to work in a slightly different way. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we can set this to show when a specific condition is met. We'll add our condition in. What we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to just choose the option for exists. So we're going to say show this element if something exists. So we're going to click on that. The next thing we have then are the fields that we can check against. And this is where the power of this comes in. You can use any field to check against to see if it exists, if there's content inside it and so on. So we could, and you would expect to be able to use the dynamic tags option. And for a lot of examples, you can actually do that. And you can see we have a lot of variables to check against all the posts, the archives, site, you know, featured image actions, or there's a ton of things inside here. And there's also a big massive block of jet engine options. It's also worth bearing in mind that if you're using the jet plugins and you're not using Elementor Pro, you'll only see jet engine based options inside you and maybe some others, but you're not going to see those ones you typically experience when using Elementor Pro because obviously you don't have that installed. OK, now you would think you could just use the jet engine gallery and then you could just click on the little wrench icon and choose gallery and the option is there to choose that. But you probably get frustrated in the fact that it doesn't work. And that's because the gallery generally outputs an array of values. Because obviously you may have multiple different images inside there because it's a gallery. You know, you can have one up to hundreds potentially. So what you have to do is make note of this little section underneath where it says it'll still work. We just can't use the dynamic tags this part of Elemental Pro, at least not at the time of recording this. This may change in the future. I have no idea, but hopefully it will change just to avoid any confusion. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that and we're going to say is we're going to keep everything else in place, but we just have to manually type in the name of the field we want to check against. Now, if you're ever unsure of what that is, if you come over and take a look inside your jet engine, inside your post types, all of your meta fields will have the name that you've assigned it. Then in italics next to it, you'll see we have agent, facilities, address, price per night, and so on. Anything inside the brackets, you can ignore that because that just tells you what type of meta field it is. What we're interested in is that first little section. So you can see for this example, if we expand it, the name dash ID is gallery. So we can simply copy that from there, knowing that we'll have no problems then with the case spacing and so on. And then we can come back into the Elemental Editor, come back into our dynamic visibility, and we can just simply paste in that data and you can see now this just says show element if condition is met exists gallery that's it that's all we need to do so we just now need to duplicate that for the second section which is the block that would normally hold the contents of our gallery so we're going to click on there do the same thing again make sure under advanced dynamic visibility enable that show if condition is met expand that out for the condition and just choose exists and then we'll just paste in that value for the field to check against Let's just click update to save those changes. And once we've done that, we're going to come back over into our site and we'll just come back to our property section. And from there, we know that the first option industry way has no associated images in a gallery. So we click to open that up. We now see that that gallery section is completely removed title and blank content area. However, we come back out and we choose a property that we know has images inside that gallery. 
we'll see there's our property images and everything is displaying as you'd expect it to. So it's a simple conditional logic kind of thing. And again, one of those things that you're probably going to do time and time and time again, especially when you're creating templates that may have various different conditions. You may have advertising, things like that, and that you want to show to a certain group of people and not others. Well, this is a great way of being able to assign that kind of thing. You could also use this for creating sort of hidden content that only certain logged in and maybe paid up users will have access to just by stopping people without a certain specific role being able to view content on the site. So you could set up a user role for a paid customer, a paid viewer, for example, and then they would be assigned that particular status. Then you can just set up conditional sections on your site that only allow access to that particular user role, and then they will be able to see it because they've paid up. Just one use case you could use these conditional tools for to create you know, much more comprehensive or unique websites without necessarily relying upon third-party plugins for you know, sort of membership sites for dealing with uh, information that's only available to certain member levels and so on. Bit of creativity, getting stuck in and finding out some things you could do with this. I think you could get really creative and create some amazing sort of sites with this kind of control. Now, before I wrap this video up and you start getting stuck into Jet Engine 2.4 and playing about with this dynamic visibility options, I want to show you one more example. And this is kind of specific to Jet Engine. I've created what's called a switcher field. And all it means is it's kind of a toggle field. You can turn it on and you can turn it off. I've just set that to be called show related. Now related just means that I can pick and choose on my template whether I want to show the related properties or I don't want to show them. Let me just quickly show you what I'm talking about. Under each one of the properties, I've got this similar property section, which basically what it does is it'll show you properties in the same vein, in other words, apartments, hotels, and so on, and in the same country and or city, depending upon how things are set up. So let's just say I want to give the user who puts the content in the option to enable or disable that on a post by post basis. Well, we just use a switcher for that. So if we come back over into Elementor, we can take a look now how we can set things up to work with this. So what we're gonna do is gonna come down to where it says similar properties and the same then for the block underneath. So this works in exactly the same way as we saw with the property images with the gallery. We've got two separate sections which we need to enable and then set up the visibility options. The easiest way to do that is just select the first one, which is the title. I'm going to come over to our advanced section into dynamic visibility and enable it. Say show element if condition is met. Open up our conditions. And what we're going to do is we're going to just come down to the jet engine specific. And you can see we've got switcher enabled or disabled. And you've also got value is checked or not checked. So you could use a checkbox if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. It's going to do the same kind of thing. So we're going to say that if the switcher is enabled, it wants to show it. So we'll say if switcher is enabled, show the element if condition is met, switcher is enabled. We then need to say what field is it that we want to use. So in the same way I showed you just now, where if you're not sure what the name of the field is, you want to reference it, simply just jump back over to that section of your jet engine meta fields and grab that info from there. I've already done that. So I'm simply going to paste that in and this is called show dash related. We're going to do the same thing again then for the field underneath. So we're just going to select the field or select the section, I should say, the item widget, whatever you want to call it. Hit dynamic visibility, enable it, show. And we're going to come down again. Our condition is going to be switcher enabled and then just paste in the details. So this now will only show this if that switcher is enabled. If it's disabled, it won't show anything at all. We'll update that. We'll come back over then into our test page. I'm going to come back out of this back to our properties. Now I've set the first property, this industry way to have the switcher enabled, so it will show the related properties. And I've set up the avenue view to have it disabled. So if we come into industry way, you can see there's our similar properties displaying the relevant property. We'll come back out of there and we'll go into avenue view. And from there, you can see now we have no section showing related properties simply because of that switcher is disabled on this particular post. Simple as that. Now, that's just a couple of examples of what you could use this for, but there are masses and masses of different options. And I would highly recommend that if you have Jet Engine 2.4 and above, that you dive in and take a look at these setups for examples and see how they work, get a real feel for what they do to get an understanding. And then you can start to implement those into your designs, into your projects, your templates, whatever it is you're working with moving forward, just to make your life super easy and not rely upon another third party plugin when working with Jet Engine. 
That's just scratching the surface of the kinds of things you can use dynamic visibility as part of Jet Engine 2.4 and above. Now, this is one of those areas that I will be using in some forthcoming tutorials where we'll take more of a deep dive into working with Jet Engine. I'm working on one currently, so hopefully that will be out quite soon, and that will incorporate various different aspects of dynamic visibility. But if you'd like to learn more about this, you'd like me to sort of really get stuck in and focus on how we could use this, let me know in the comments section below. If enough people are interested, then I'll take a look at creating more dedicated content to this dynamic visibility option. I'd taking you through some more advanced use cases. Let me know, like I say, in the comment section below. This really is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to controlling the visibility of almost any part of your WordPress website. And the ease in which you can stack multiple conditions opens up a lot of really creative possibilities. Now, if you want to learn more about how to get the most out of Jet Engine, click on the playlist you can see on screen right now. But what are your thoughts? Is there anything missing you'd like to see in future updates? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, all of the applicable links for everything covered are in the description. My name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.